if I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. All right, welcome to the 2019 MLK Reflections. I'm just going to get into it and say it like it is. Um, yeah, as the clip, I used the clip uh, from his speech, from his 68 speech, from his last speech, because it talks about a lot of things that people fail to realize a lot of times, you know, um, the greatness of America and what it really is. You know, I know we have a lot of things said about, you know, the greatness of America, you know, from, you know, our president and, you know, stuff of that nature. And, you know, I just wanted to give my thoughts and some, some of my reflections on the time and, and life that we're living in and how things are, you know, because the reality of it all is, you know, we're living in a tough time right now. And, you know, really what the greatness of America, as MLK was saying in the clip that I gave you from his last speech, is the greatness of America is the right to protest and fight for right. That is the greatness of America, you know, um, not America being needed to make great Again, you know, because I'm trying to figure out as a black person what era of, <laughs> you know, American history was actually, you know, great for, you know, black folks. But that's another story all in itself. Maybe the same story. I, I look at it this way. You know, we have a lot going on with immigration, women's rights, you know, L the LGBT community, you know, LGBTQ. You know, I, I think that it's a lot you know, that's lacking as far as civility, you know, uh, I think uh, Martin Luther King said, you know, never let a man take you so low as to stoop down to, to their level. And I'm paraphrasing the, the quote, I probably have to put the actual quote somewhere up there, you know, in the, in the graphics somewhere like that. But the point is, you know, we live in a very divisive time, you know, where civility is lost. And, you know, on this MLK, um, 2019 MLK reflection, um, I'm just really, you know, looking at, you know, some of the things that, you know, um, MLK strive for, you know, you know, uniting all people together. And I think we live in a society right now where it's becoming OK for people to go, you know, back into their corners and be divided and, you know, have a divisiveness. And, you know, OK, maybe for some folks to boost up, you know, uh, xenophobia, racism, homophobia, you know, um, stuff against transgender people as opposed to understanding people for their differences and stuff like that and understanding, you know, what makes us different is what makes us special. And a lot of times people forget that, you know, like, you know, caught up in, you know, maybe partisan politics or, you know, just people, you know, leaning towards their agenda, you know, or whatever they're about. And I'm not going to sit here and saying and say, you know, it's a kumbaya moment. We should all hold hands and, you know, everything is going to be all right. That's the truth is everything ain't going to be all right. There's going to be issues. But we can work through it together. You know, it's about trying to understand each other. You know, it's about trying to, you know, fight for equality for all people, which is something, you know, Martin Luther King, you know, definitely did, which he died for. You know, that's why, you know, in this MLK Reflections, I'm, I'm just really looking back and I do this every year because it's important to understand, you know, that people fought and died for, you know, folks like myself to be able to you know, live and be accepted in society, you know, especially when you, if you want to know what he was and what his dream was about, you know, you go back to, you know, the I have a dream speech, you know, where, you know, little white boys and white girls and folks of different colors can play together and not have to worry about the division and the separation, you know, which, you know, a lot of times, you know, gets, you know, pushed out there and even in some circles celebrated. In 2019, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy that we still have to deal with, you know, issues of immigration and inequality and, you know, just uh, racism and stuff like that. But, you know, it just shows as far as we have come, you know, we still have so much farther to go. 
And the issue is not so much about racism anymore, even though racism exists, you know, not trying to, you know, put it out there and say it doesn't. It does. It's alive and well. You know, it's just more subtle. You know, some people say it's more insidious, you know, you know, in the cut, you know, just, you know, institutionalized, you know, and, you know, you could do what you want to do with that. But I just say, you know, I, I just don't want the civility loss. I just don't want the love loss, you know you know, of the people that are trying to, you know, actually still bring things together. You know, I don't want people to forget that, you know, we're still human beings, regardless of our differences, regardless of whether you're religious, whether you're atheist, you know, whether you're Jewish, whether you're gay, whether you're straight, you know, whether you're Catholic, Muslim, Buddhist, whatever you are, you know, you know, agnostic, you know, it's something to be said, you know, about seeing each other first as the human being you know, tapping into, you know, the inner self, understanding, you know, what similarities we have as opposed to looking at the differences and whatnot and going off to the corner and saying, okay, maybe it's a Democrat or Republican issue, you know, because I'm really looking at stuff right now. Like I said, there's a lot of divisiveness. Look at the, in America, there's the government workers right now, you know, um, you know, shout out to the, you know, furlough federal workers out there, you know, who are struggling over divisiveness that are coming from things that, you know, maybe they don't really have anything to do with, you know, um, partisan politics and stuff like that, you know, and, and on this, you know, MLK Day, hopefully, you know, folks begin to, you know, come together, you know, the, the nation's politicians and stuff like that, you know, it's, it's something to say, you know, because how we are as far as, you know, officials or leaders or peoples of power saying we as far as far as they are, you know, it is important to understand that, you know, what you do affects other people. You know, and, and hopefully on this MLK Day, you know, there's some time for reflection. There's some time for people to sit back and look at what's important about how we interact with each other as human beings. You know, I mean, a lot of us are Americans. You know, a lot of us do have political leanings or not have political leanings. But more than anything, you know, you know, especially here in America or anywhere across the world, you know, we're human beings first. And I think a lot of that is lost, you know, um, I don't know. It just just enough can't be said. I I think it's it's important to just see the individual first. See where the similarities lie. You know, see what you know makes us you know um, special. You know, even if it's different. You know, even if it's something we may not agree with. See see what you know commonalities we may have. You know, maybe it may be a a certain way. You know that you that you eat. A certain way that you dress. You know, maybe it may be the same movies you like. You never know where you find commonalities with people. You know, it could be in the, in the most minute things, you know, it could be your love of cats. I don't know, you know, but the point is, it's so much that we lose by fighting with each other. It's so much that we lose by looking for reasons to be at odds with each other. Now, I mean, you don't have to like everybody, you know, I mean, it's shed love to somebody, you love a person, you ain't really got to like everything that they're about. You ain't really got to be down for, you know, everything that they go through. But the thing is, you know, we got one planet. And I've said this before, we got one planet, you know, this is it. There's no other one somewhere. I know people want to go to Mars. You go to Mars by yourself with that one. <laughs> you know, hopefully it doesn't sound like I'm rambling on. But the point is, you know, to bring it back to it, like I said, I'm not trying to get too long-winded here, is to understand that, you know, um, people just, you know, have fought and died for us to be in a situation where we could actually push forward and, and, and do something. And, and, and actually just see each other for the content of our character, you know, not the color of our skin. And even just to add to that, you know, what, you know, MLSK words is, you know, not so much caught up in the person's sexuality or their religion or their politics, you know, and I just take the time each year to reflect on it because we miss so much caught up in our divisions. We miss so much of, you know, the moments that we could share actually, you know, coming together as human beings and getting things done, you know, trying to take care of the environment, you know, uh, passing something on to the youth that's, you know, for the, for the future generations that's worth passing on to. You know, a lot of times we get caught up in, you know, our divisions and, and our hatred towards each other that we forget that, you know, it affects the planet, it affects future generations. You know, Tupac said, you know, some people say it ain't no hope for the youth. And he said, the truth is it ain't no hope for the future, you know, but we want there to be hope for the future. That's why I do these reflections. That's why I take the time to talk about these things, you know, because it, it is something that I see within humanity. You know, I see an ability, uh, an, an innate quality, 
you know, to, to overcome things. But like an old timer told me, you know, people do get in the way. People's emotions, I say, get in the way, you know, of progress, of, you know, moving forward, you know, of, you know, sharing love, just seeing, you know, um, our differences and not being so quick to tear each other down, you know, because as the old saying goes, people fear what they don't understand. So why not just take time out to understand folks to see where people are coming from? You know, you don't have to live, you know, everybody's lifestyle. You don't have to agree with where everybody's coming from. But like I said, we only have one society. We only have one planet. You know, a lot of, a lot of cases, you know, some people live in one strip of land, countries or whatever the case, you know, you know, um, you know, living arrangement they're in. I mean, this is it. You know, this is not a dress rehearsal, you know. So it's it's important for us to just, you know, like I said, look at each other and not be so quick to judge a person, you know, based upon what you see, you know, the picture that you are presented with, you know, and then even with, you know, situations with immigrants, you know, don't be so quick, you know, to say because, you know, they're from another country, they're coming into the country and then, you know, you, you push them down and you look at them like they're not human. You know, I, I say if anything you could get from this video, you know, from this MLK Reflections is, is important not to, you know, dehumanize somebody because they're different. And I think that's what happens a lot of times. We dehumanize each other, you know, because of our differences. In closing, though, like I said, the video's cut up because I had got a phone call. Sorry about that. In closing, though, it is important how we treat each other, you know, and not to judge each other just because we're different, you know. You know, it's rough out there because sometimes people are close-minded and don't want to see things beyond, you know, their scope of understanding, you know, beyond how they live. And I think that it does us all disservice as humanity when we don't see each other for our differences, you know, and, and appreciate each other, regardless of whether or not we believe the same things or we have the same politics. It's important to see each other as human beings more than anything. In closing of this video, I just wanted to say that um, this is not meant to be an exhaustive history, a little deep dive. These are just my reflections on MLK Day, you know, with different things that are going on through my mind, it's like reflections, you know. And um, as for the speech, you know, his last speech, you know, that was something I pulled, you know, because I thought it would be appropriate for the conversation. And also, too, I just wanted to say that the whole speech you know, his last speech is not about, you know, the greatness of America. It is actually a deep speech that you, I encourage you for a lot of you folks that haven't watched it in a while or young ones out there, you know, who need to know, you know, to go check it out. All you have to do is just type in MLK's last speech. It's about so much more than what I have time to tackle in this video. And forgive me for any errors, or anything that I may have made in this video. Like I said, this is not meant to be an exhaustive video this is just my reflections for mlk you know 2019 which is important but like i said i'm just a small piece of a larger part and this is just you know how i present you know you know my reflections or opinions about you know different things in the country you know surrounding you know um the values and principles or just the words and teachings of mlk thank you for watching appreciate it Peace.